Good morning. Good morning. I welcome you here this morning as we gather together to worship and to praise our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, we will be uh, serving communion again this morning, so if you're joining us via the media system, uh, we'll be offering communion again today. So if you want to get the elements or if you missed it from last week, uh, you're welcome to join us at home. And there's no rule or law that says that we can't have uh, communion more than once. Scripture says, as often as you do this. So, uh, being out there was a lot of snow last week. Uh, a lot of folks weren't here. And we want to make sure that we uh, give you the opportunity to join in the Lord's table with communion. So, we'll be doing that today also. Tomorrow evening... A time of scrapbooking at uh, 6 30 of Country Comfort. Uh, year end reports for 2023 are due. And also uh, a big thank you to uh, those of you who participated and helped with the funeral and the, the time of reception uh, for Bob Snyder's family. Uh, they gave us a big thank you over the internet. being a part of their time of grief now. So if you see them, Doreen, or any member of the family, be with them. Also, uh, if you would like envelopes for tidings, the uh, Mary Club, next Sunday, next Sunday is a Sanctity of Life Sunday, uh, so we'll be having a guest speaker here uh, from Expectations, and the, the work that they do, Caller will be giving us updates and, and bringing forth the, uh, the message and, and, the, and uh, the work that they do. I, did believe, I do believe she has a video that she would like to show early on as some of the uh, testimonies of their clients. On February the 12th will be a leadership meeting here at 6.30. Wednesday the 14th, uh, up at uh, Dorcas meeting will be at Bonanza at 6.30. If you have any questions or uh, about that, uh, you can see Jamie. And also, on coming up on the 18th, will be a congregation meeting uh, that will take place here following the worship service. Do we have any other announcements? If not, uh, would uh, Anna and we have something that you'd like to bring forth this morning? My daily Bible reading the lid is called Faith Leads. And it comes from Hebrews 11, verse 6. <clears throat> Without faith, it is impossible to please God. For whoever would approach him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who really seek him. We spend a lot of our lives trying to please people whether it's a tiny house, a delicious meal, a great birthday present, or new clothes. It seems that to gain approval, we need to do things that make us look good to other people. This is often how we approach God, with great effort to do the right things to please Him. But the Bible says that it is impossible to please Him without faith. What is faith? It's a belief in our heart and a confession with your mouth that Jesus Christ is our Lord. It's not what you do that will please God. It is a heart that seeks to follow Him. Approach the Lord today with the surety that He is pleased with you, not because of what you do, but because you believe in Him. 
And then the verse that the person wrote at the end as a little prayer is, Father, I come with a heart that wants to please you. Forgive me for thinking that all the good things that I do are more important than a heart that believes in you and continually seeks your will. I have faith in you, and I will. I wait patiently for the reward of seeking you. Of seeing you, I'm sorry, of seeing you. And also, I'd like to say thanks to all people that sent get ball cards. I am one of the men, and I'm just as feisty as ever. <laughs> Thank you, Anne. We also received uh, two uh, thank yous from uh, our outreach that we have uh, been able to help others. Uh, one of them is from the uh, Salvation Army, uh, and the other one is from the uh, First Baptist Church in Berwick when they were struggling with uh, a problem that they had. These uh, postcards and letters will be out on the bulletin board. And we thank you for your willingness to help others who are in need at particular times in their lives when they need a helping hand. And being the hands and feet of Jesus is why we're here. Any other announcements? Let's go to the Lord. Mm -hmm. Gracious Father, we come to you again this morning with joyousness on our hearts that we can be in your presence here this morning. Lord, we thank you ever so much for each soul that is here this morning in, in your presence. And Lord, for those who are joining us via the systems of electronics. And Lord, be with us. May your spirit envelop us this morning as we open up your word, as we sing praises and glory and hymns and to you, and bring about that closeness, that fellowship, that relationship that we as humans desire with our Heavenly Father. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to join together here in peace and in safety as we worship our Lord and our soon-coming Savior, Jesus Christ, our King. And it's in his name that we pray. Amen. Stand as we sing the John song.
speaking a lot about here today, is grace. Grace is unmerited favor. Unmerited. You didn't deserve it. You didn't earn it. Mm -hmm. It is given to you freely. And I forget the name that they use if you take words and you put a letter, for each letter you, you uh, put a, another word with it. You know, grace could be described in, in that fashion as God's riches at Christ's expense. G-R-A-C-E. -E. God's riches at Christ's expense. Unmerited favor. Unmerited. We didn't earn it. It is given to us purely and simple. By grace. This passage is explaining how it's not about works. It's always been grace. Mm -hmm. it is, it's grace that put Jesus on the cross for our sins. Unmerited favor. And when we realize that, that we can't work regardless of what we try to do, we cannot merit God's love, God's atoning sacrifice for sin, my sins, your sins, sins of the entire world. You see, the folks then were confused about how this works, how, how grace is, is grace alone, which God supplies. There's a song like that. Yeah. <laughs> it was when Moody, D.L. Moody, realized that it was not about study, it was not about intellect, it was not about theology, it was grace. He ran down the street and was just yelling, grace, grace, gleefully hollering. You know, it's all about grace. And that's the same way it is for you and I. It's all about grace. As Mary Sue started out with, it's grace. There's nothing we can do that hasn't already been done. We can't earn it. Christ did it all. Grace is the source of our salvation. 
It's not by works, lest any man should boast, Scripture says. We need to be able to realize that even so, at this present time, as the Apostle Paul wrote to the church at Rome, in Paul's time, it transgenes into today. Even to this present day, this present time, also, there is a remnant. There is a remnant. Now, Paul was speaking of those individuals of his day, but there's a remnant today. People who have not bowed at the knee for, for cultural changes or biblical changes. There is a remnant. There is churches that are moving. There is the heart. The Holy Spirit has not left. People's lives are being rearranged, changed, gloriously saved by the, the grace of God. Bringing forth. There's always a remnant. Even in that land in the Middle East. There's a remnant there. Lives are being changed. Even, even though amongst that chaos. God has a remnant. According to the election of grace. Now we can get all bound up. By that word election. You know, so some folks, denominations that believe that what there's some that are you're you're elected to go to heaven or you're elected to go to hell. No, there's no such process for that. What is indeed the election? What is indeed is the process that which God has given to us through His Son Jesus. That. Grace is available. The election by God to do that is His choice. You know, there's people that go through life that they can only see they, they can only see the one word. You know, and it's election. You know, it's predestination. You know, God has already chosen. No, He has not. The process to issue grace to you and I has been foretold in eternity past. God knew it. He would use that. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Either I'm supposed to shut up or you keep preaching. I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm supposed to listen. It's that high, right? right. It's that high wind. But what isn't chosen by God who goes to heaven or who goes to hell? That choice is given to the individuals. The process, the election of salvation hasn't changed. That's the election. The individual still has that choice to make. So it's not predestined as some people believe. According to the remnant, according to the remnant, you know, even, you know, when we think, oh, I'm all alone. You know, where I go to work, I'm the only believer. Yeah, you might be the only remnant there. Or out, out where I go with the family members and stuff like that, or the places where, you know, I'm the, I'm the only one who believes in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. You may be, but if that's the case, maybe you can't dismiss your family, but you may want to change your people, places, and things that you're into. You know, even Elijah had, had that, that com complex. There we go, we got it out. He's under the tree saying, oh, I'm the only one, Lord. I'm the last one. I'm the last prophet that's alive. And the Lord speaks to him and says, I've got 5,000 more just like you. <laughs> so whenever you think you're alone, you're not. God is with you. Amen. God and you are a majority regardless of where you are at. That's right. You're a part of that remnant. 
So we need not to get all confused and bound up by it by that one little word, election or predestination. People who are not predestined, people are not predestined. Let's get to heaven by election, electing to serve Jesus Christ. Then it goes on to say, for it is by grace. Grace. It is by that little word, unmerited favor, that you and I get the opportunity to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. We didn't deserve the salvation that we got, that we have. It was, we couldn't earn it. And that's what Paul is putting across here to the church of Rome. He's explaining to them that it's by grace alone. Grace. If by grace, then there is no more works. It's by grace. We can't earn it. We've just, let's establish that right now. It comes to us unmerited. We're speaking of salvation. We can't earn it and we can't achieve it on our own. When we look at look at to even back as far as into Genesis, uh, Genesis chapter 6 and 8, if we look at that passage of scripture, it says, But, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. It was a Sunday, a Sunday school song. No one found grace in the eyes of the Lord. No one found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Noah, having a God consciousness, found grace that God provided in, his, in the eyes of the Lord. You see, when Noah's time, there was no law. The laws had not been given. It was be long before the Exodus. And if you notice it, uh, the grace that God provided to Noah extended to his family. It was God consciousness knowing that the rest of the world was in wickedness and they were being obedient to what the Lord had instructed them to do. To build an ark. And that ark today is Jesus. Jesus Christ is our ark that rescues us from all that which was destroyed and will be destroyed because of wickedness. Paul is telling the church at Rome, it's not by works. Because if it was by works, then there would be no need for grace. Mm -hmm. We put it in that terminology that simplifies it. It's by grace alone, a gift, an unmerited favor from God. And if it's by works, there's no need for grace. But it's not by works. But if it be of works, there would be no more grace. Otherwise, Work is no more work. If it's by grace, we don't need to try and earn it. And you know, there's just something inherently in us that we think that we can pull ourselves up by our own bootstraps and make our way through, plow our way through life on our own terms and our own, our own theologies. Works cannot produce grace. Self attempting to earn grace. In other words, works cancel out grace. So it may sound confusing, and I hope you're understanding this a little bit better. Grace comes from God, cannot be earned. Works are null and void in the eyes of God. 
can't earn our salvation. It's strictly by grace. Unmerited favor. But there's a warning to grace. Grace, that which is given to us, is so abundant. In 2 Corinthians, Paul puts it this way, and he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. The Lord was telling the Apostle Paul that it's his strength that makes us weaker. We become not so much physically weaker, we become more dependent on God. We no longer, be, we can become weaker in ourselves, our own self, and we rely more on God. Therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities. I would call the saying, I would rather boast of my weaknesses in myself that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Oh, wow. Then he also writes to the church in Galatia. 2 and 21 in Galatia. He says, I do not set aside the grace of God, for it is righteousness. For if righteousness came through the law, then Christ died in vain. You know, all those laws, the 613 laws that, you know, the, the Jewish community couldn't keep them. Only Christ did. Each and every one. He kept it perfectly. It pointed to the fact that if they couldn't keep it, they were guilty of condemnation. It pointed to the, to the fact that they needed a Savior in the same light that you and I need a Savior. There's a warning here that comes for, for individuals who live under grace. And that's you and I. You know, it's a, like a warning sign. You know, don't go in there. One way. Uh, some people think that grace is a license to sin. Oh, I'm under grace, but I can still go do whatever I want to. Ha. Uh, grace is not a license to do whatever you think is right. The Apostle Paul and also Jude had some words to say about that. You know, Jude, you know, that's Jesus' brother. Had the same mother, but different fathers. So he's half brother, I guess. Jude says this: For certain men have crept in unknown. And where did they creep into? They crept into the church, into denominations, into the hearts and lives of individuals. Mark out this condemnation, ungodly men who turn the grace of our God into lewdness and deny the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Wow. Even back then, there was people who wanted to dilute the grace of God. You take God at its fullest, every aspect of it. You don't make it fit your itinerary. Mm -hmm. You don't make it fit your community culture. I heard an individual just say yesterday. He said this. He said we've got institutions throughout our nation that are giving instruction and glorifying what God destroyed at Sodom. Paul 
Christ to the church of Galatia. Oh, you foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? Before whose eyes Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed among you as crucified. You see, Paul preached in a, such a powerful way that the audience there could visualize Christ being crucified and paying the sins penalty. Uh, one would think that things haven't changed much from, since the first century to today. Salvation comes through grace. Amidst the confusion and the contradictions of Paul's day, and in ours today, it is crystal clear that which Paul wrote to the church at Ephesus. To the praise of the glory of his grace, which by which he made us acceptable in the beloved, in other words, in Christ, and in him. You see, when you, when you read Romans, you'll see that terminology, in Christ, or in him. When Christ was on the cross, he looked into the future and saw the sins of the world, the stuff that's going on, the, the heinous crimes that we see coming across our, our news screens and in our newspapers. Christ died for them. In him, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. Did you ever think about grace as, you know, in this aspect? Now, did you ever get a, a gift card? You know, a you know, someone gives you a gift card or, or a coupon, and you go to the store or you go to the restaurant or wherever it may be, and you hand that in and say, I want to redeem this. Well, when you redeem that, someone else paid for it in advance. And that's what Christ did on Calvary's cross. And given us through grace salvation for all eternity. If we take away anything from this message this morning, if salvation comes by grace, then it is not by works. Works cannot produce grace. And if any by works, then there would be no reason Jesus in our lives. And we would be our own God. And we, can, we can look in our mirror and say, well, oh, I've got myself in all kinds of being myself. It is grace. Grace. God's grace that redeemed us on Calvary. And that brings us to our Number 356, and it's in the blue redeemed. Oh, sorry. And during the last verse with our diet. I think we should stand. 356. Stand as we stand.
thing, and I say this all the time, it's not that you belong to the Montana Baptist Church, but it's important that you belong to his church. That's where it counts. Well, could we have a prayer for the, the bread, please? It's bow. Thank you. Lord, we come before your table today, and we give you thanks for your ultimate sacrifice that you did for me. We think of that first communion that you have with your disciples and how you broke the bread and said, this is my body broken for you. Lord, we come to your table today giving you thanks for what you did for us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. The Lord Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, when he took bread and broke it and said, this is my body, which is given for you.
when he had given thanks, he said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's eat this bread together. In the same way, after supper, saying, This is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. May we have a prayer for the, for the element of the shed blood. Dear Father, we come to you today and share communion. And as we take this cup in remembrance of your blood that was shed for our sins, let us draw closer to you and be part of your family and help us to continue to grow in that love, that forgiveness, and that grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Jesus proclaimed that evening, for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. Let us drink this cup together in remembrance of our Lord. Lord, we can never hope to come to you by our own merit. It is only through the grace, the grace that God provides. Be with us now as we continue, as we end this service in a time of gloriousness and the revealing of your wonderful light in our lives. In Jesus' name. Stand as we sing. Number 338 in the blue hymnal. A wonderful grace. We've got a lot of power. Sing out loud. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
your loving grace. Be with us, Lord, till we meet next Lord's Day. Keep us safe until or else until you call us to meet you in the air. Either way, it's by grace and grace alone. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Amen.